Amen. Amen. Okay. Facebook is now live. Got that going. Got the conference call going. I'm going to mute everybody's line on the conference call. All right. Conference call lines are muted. And I will start the recording on the conference call. This call is being recorded. Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition. And I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church in Harvest, Alabama. I say to you on this December 25th, 2016 Merry 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 Christmas yes Merry Christmas and to my Savior and to our Lord happy birthday Jesus happy birthday Jesus happy birthday oh happy birthday happy birthday it's your birthday Jesus it's your birthday we celebrate your birthday, Jesus, on this day. Glory, hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. The Heavenly Father, we thank you, we thank you, and we thank you that you gave us your only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ. You gave him to us, dear Lord, as a gift. But Lord, we just say to you, thank you, because not only has he been a gift to us, we thank you, Lord, that because he is a gift to us, we can be a gift to him. Thank you, oh God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, Lord, we just ask you, as we get ready to study your Sunday school lesson, that you open up our hearts and our minds to your word, that, that we might receive your word. And then now, after we receive your word, Lord, that we might be doers of your word. Don't let us just be hearers, let us be doers. And we thank you for this and we praise you and we give you all the glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Welcome again, everyone, to the Guiding Light Ministry and all of those who are on this Sunday School lesson. This Some of you may be your first time listening in on a, uh, on a Sunday School lesson on, on Facebook and those who are listening to us on the conference call. Um, let me just do some preliminary things. After we get through with the Facebook Live uh, uh, portion of the lesson, we go into what is called overtime. And in the overtime, we, we have a dialogue. And we do prayer and things of that nature. So so uh, tune in to the overtime section by calling our conference call number, which is 910 218-0531-910-218-0531. I'll mention that again later on in the broadcast. Now, oh, this lesson, this lesson, this lesson this morning. Y'all, we know, we know, we know, we know this lesson. We know the Sunday school lesson. And so I'm not going to play with this lesson. I'm just going to do it straight. Just like it's flowing out the Bible, and after I do it straight out the Bible, oh, I got I got something God has put, want me to put on our hearts as a question that each one of us need to answer. Hallelujah! I, I got to do what I have to do. I didn't didn't do my thing this morning. I didn't take care of my glasses, and my glasses not clean, so I have to do that. So so let let's go now as I'm. Cleaning my glasses on Facebook. I know. Y'all going, man, this guy here, he ain't have his stuff together. Well, it's Christmas morning. I'm here. So let's turn to our scripture for this morning. Our scripture comes from Luke. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 8. Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 8. And you know, I'm going to read it out the Message Bible this morning. Uh, this is a familiar passage of scripture, so you won't be hurt if I read it out of the Message Bible this morning. So let's see now. Okay, 
Now, I know I'm sounding pretty good on on um uh see on the conference call. If I'm not, please send me a text or let me know that I'm not doing good on the conference call, but I see everything sounding good. And then on Facebook, I see a few people have came on. And those who are on Facebook, if you're still on with me here, make sure you say hello or do a like or something so I know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and all communication is coming through fine. So here we go, Luke chapter 2. Starting at verse 8. And I'm reading from the Message Bible. There were sheep herders camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watch over the sheep. Suddenly God's angel stood among them. And God's glory blazed all around them. They were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. I'm, I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. Verse 11. A savior has just been born in David's town. A savior who is Messiah and Master. This is what you're to look for a baby wrapped in a blanket, lying in a manger. At once, the angels was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praise. Glory to God in the highest. Peace to all men. And goodwill towards all men. I have to read that one out the, out the King James. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill towards all men. Oh, hallelujah. Verse, 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 verse 15. And the angel choir withdrew into heaven. The sheep herders talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met the angel, told everyone they met what the angel had said about the child. All who heard the shepherds, the sheep herders were, were impressed. Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within her. The sheep herders, the shepherds, they, they returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen. It turned out exactly the way they had been told. And so this morning, this morning, I'm going to approach this lesson from this standpoint. The shepherds heard. The shepherds seeked. And the shepherds glorified the Savior. That, that's my three points. I, and I can't put it any other kind of way. Those are simple three points. Because this story is about the, 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 the shepherds being visited in the middle of the night by some angels. Now, now what's, what was so powerful about this is, is that, that we know the shepherds were considered nobodies. The shepherds were, were considered people who, who were, were of the least of the estate. But, but, but that's where the angels showed up the angel showed up 
to talk to shepherds, men and boys who, who were taking care of sheep. That's who he showed up to. That's who he sent his angels to. He sent them to everyday common people to tell them the good news about the Savior of the world. And the shepherds heard the angels. First, they were terrified. First, it startled them and scared them. And anytime you get an angelic message, uh, I don't care who you are, it should shake you. Uh, when you hear a word from God that is out of the ordinary, it should shake you. And it shook them. But the angels gave them peace and comfort. They said, don't, don't, don't be afraid. This, this, what I'm getting ready to tell you is good news. It's the gospel. It's good news. It's the gospel. I, I'm telling you this, this, this good news. And they said to them, look, this day, this very day, this very day, in the town of David, we know as Bethlehem, a baby is born. And he is the king of kings. And he will be Lord of lords. Because he is the savior of the world. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that's good news. That's good news, y'all. That was good news then, and that's still good news today. So when the shepherds heard what the angels had said, when they comprehended in their mind what the angels was telling them, it was like, wow. And then God, <laughs> I love this part about this scripture, God as they were sitting there contemplating all of this, God just had the angels to show out. <laughs> Boy, that's why when you go to church and the choir get to rolling and they get to, they get to singing, God anoints that choir with his Holy Spirit and the choir members get to, glow, get to glowing and the Holy Spirit get to glowing through them. And ain't nothing like God showing out like that. Glory to God in the highest. And peace on earth and goodwill towards men. That whole heavenly angels choir start praising God. That's how we should be on this day ourselves. We should just show out for God and let just give him all the glory. Give him all the honor and give him all the praise. Because when you do that, just like these angels did for these shepherds, it lets that person know that what you're saying you truly believe. See, your, 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 your true belief will come out in your praise. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you write that one down. Your true belief will come out in your praise. Now, let me say it a little deeper so you can just capture this one. If you walk around complaining all the time, that's your true belief. But if you're walking around with a thanksgiving on your heart, you know that you know that you know that God got all this thing under control. All things work together for good for them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So, therefore, I can't do nothing but give him praise and glory and honor. Because no matter what's going on, whether it's my good and, or whether it's my bad or whether it's even my ugly, it's all going to work for my good. So I got to lift my hands and give him some praise. I'm moving on. I'm moving on now. I'm moving on. So, so the shepherds heard him. They heard the angels. And the angels told him, say, look now, I want you to understand you'll find this baby as proof, wrapped in swaddling claws, wrapped in a blanket, lying in a manger. 
And so the shepherds heard it. And after the angels had finished their, their chorus, then the shepherds went and sought Jesus themselves. It is good to hear the word. It is good to hear a message. But you need to seek him for yourself. I'm going to say that again. It's good to hear a word about Jesus. You can hear some good preaching. You can hear some good teaching. You can hear some good singing. But you need to seek him. Oh, hallelujah. You need to seek him for yourself. Oh, yes. I, I got to take a sip. I got, I got to be like the little frog, Kermit. If you haven't taught Jesus for yourself, You don't know a thing because this, this is personal. This is personal. Yes. Your relationship with Jesus is personal. You can't have your mama's religion, your daddy's religion, your granddaddy's religion. You better get your own relationship. With Jesus. You better seek him. For. Yourself. And that's what the. Shepherds did. They went and they sought. Jesus. For themselves. And a person who is a true seeker. Is a person who's trying to find something. They're attempting to find it. For themselves. Some people seek wisdom and knowledge. And understanding. You can seek all of those things. Because they are all found in Jesus. Some people are looking for love. In all the wrong places. I'm here to tell you. You can always find love. From love himself. And that's Jesus the Christ. Some people are always looking for peace. Oh, you want peace? You need to talk to the Prince of Peace. You need to seek the Savior. You need to seek Jesus. And so they went looking. And the shepherds, the scripture says, they found what they were looking for. Oh, hallelujah. It, I'm just here to tell you, if you seek Jesus, you will always find what you're looking for. That's it. It's, it's, it's so simple. Once you hear about him, you need to seek him for yourself. And I promise you that you will find him. Because he's not hiding. He's not hard to find. He's sitting right there waiting on you going, look, here I am. I'm the Lord Jesus. And I've been waiting on you to just seek me. And so they found him just as the, as the angels had told them. Lying in a manger. And I love how, how the scripture says that. That they, when, 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 what they did, they went fast. They, they went in a hurry trying to find Jesus. These shepherds didn't play. And when they got there, when they looked in, in, in Bethlehem, they saw and they found Mary and Joseph and that baby that one, that one they call Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, lying in a manger. Oh, hallelujah. Before I go to my last point, I got to talk about this manger for a minute. It just blesses me every time I think about the manger. Because the manger, the manger... Is first a cold place. 
Secondly, the manger is a dark place. And thirdly, the manger is a dirty place. Understand, this, this manger, you know, where, where, where Jesus was being laid was cold, dark, and dirty. And the question that, that has to come to your mind, why was Jesus born in a place like that? Why would, would God allow the Savior of the world to be born in a cold, dark, and dirty place? Well, my brothers and my sisters, I'm here to tell you that, that he came as a lonely servant. That's the first thing you need to understand. He didn't come in no palace. He didn't come with no big entourage. He came in the lonely manger. That shows his humility. That shows his servanthood. That shows his bond servanthood. But that's on Jesus' side. But the reason I believe he came to a cold and dark and dirty manger is because that's the way he's going to enter the world and enter into our hearts. Because without Jesus in your heart, you're just like an old, cold, dirty, dark manger and let me add to it because the manger also stinks yes that's how God comes in now when he enters into our cold hearts our cold human hearts our dark and dirty hearts our hearts are the manger in which Jesus enters into our lives. The question is, will you let him into your heart? Or will you be like those others in, in the other stories where the reason they were in the manger in the first place was because no one would have room for them in the end. No one wanted to let them in. And they came into a manger. There are many people in this world that won't let Jesus in because they think they already got it going on, that they got everything under control, that they got their way to heaven and all of that. I'm sorry, the word of God is true. There's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. And if he doesn't come into your heart and lie in your manger, your dirty, cold, dark heart, and become your Savior and Lord. Mm -mm. You don't have it going on. So just like that Christmas miracle. That just happened with these shepherds seeing the baby Jesus lying in a manger. That same miracle can happen in your life. Jesus can come and lie right into your heart and you can be born again too. And the light of his love and the joy and the peace that he brings will fill your heart. It'll no longer be dark. It'll no longer be cold. It'll no longer be dirty. All you have to do is let Jesus in. <laughs> Glory to God. My final point tonight or this morning is that after the shepherds heard, after the shepherds sought him and seeked him for themselves, they said that they glorified the Savior. The scripture says that 
in verse 17, seeing was believing. That's what the Message Bible said. The New King James says, now when they had seen him, they had widely known the same which was told them concerning the child. They saw him for themselves. Sometimes people, it takes them seeing it for themselves. They like those of us who lived in Missouri, uh, the show me state. We, you got to show us for us to believe it. But I'm here to tell you, if you believe, you will see. And then you can be like these shepherds who went around glorifying God for what they had seen. Marveling. The Message Bible says the, the shepherds returned to, 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 the, to the, uh, their sheep and to their other shepherds. And it says, and they let loose. Glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen. Because it turned out exactly the way they were told. I don't know about you. But people used to tell me before I became baptized. And I said, well, you're going to feel brand new. You, you going you go when you get after you after you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You 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 going you gonna have a new walk and you gonna have a new talk. And I said, oh no 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 no, can't be that. It ain't that good. Oh, but once I let Jesus come into my heart, yes yes yes. Once He came into my heart, I looked at my hands and my hands look new. I looked at my feet and my feet did too. I had a joy in my life. I had a praise on my lips. I got a twinkle in my eye because I know my Savior lives and he lives in me. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for letting him come into our hearts into our mangers. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Before we leave a message, we like to give those who are listening <coughs> an opportunity to give your life to Christ. Today, a Savior has been born, and he can be born in your heart if you will let him. Let us pray the prayer of salvation. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and since you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule in the reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Bless those who are on Facebook. That you have received this word and that you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Those who are on the conference call, we're going to get ready to go into overtime. If you want to join us in the conference call on overtime from Facebook, call 910-218-0531. Thank you. The thought to remember for this lesson, respond in wonder. Yet again, for God's unspeakable gift. Be a blessing. Bye, Facebook. <laughs>